Yeah, I, I is thought... it pandering? Is it pandering or is he just scared? I don't know. I, I think I would be scared. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Vici taking on Divine Vendetta here, Blood. Now, obviously, you'd be a little bit insane if you didn't expect Vici to win this. Um, I think coming into this, Vici are probably one of the best teams within the, the region. They've got the best player on the continent on their team in the form of Kaze. This should be a Vici win. Well, Mirage is a map that they have looked relatively solid on, so we shall see what they can do as Ezram charges straight down short, looking to take the fight immediately up and towards Catwalk. Yeah, Almond immediately falling back short, trying to set up the... Uh... The angle with his teammate towards B apps. Zoking is aware. He's aware of Tyke's position. Tyke's gonna fall. First blood going the way of VG. Pokemon duking out with Admin, but he's getting shot from everywhere. And a little bit of a scroll jump as well coming in. Kaze at least gets uh, taken down to 7 HP though. This is messy already, Dinko. As Edram finds Kaze, the low player. Davdos is gonna find Jamyang. This is a very smart call coming in from the T. They're gonna be rushing into an empty bomb site. And now, VG. The tables have definitely turned. And if Pokemon can maybe do something a little bit more here, he does the damage, but doesn't finish off the kill. Almond down to 2 HP is a 3v3 bomb, yet to be planted, and it will. And his retake, Advin, Zoking, and Almond. Almond and 2 HP, Advin has a kit and a smoke, but it's gonna come down. I mainly feel like Zoking has to do a lot of work here. Ezram, good positioning. He'll take down Advin. Zoking goes down as well, and this is gonna be a pistol win for Divine Vendetta. Almond so far away. And the last time we've seen Vici play here on Mirage, Omen was popping off. He was looking so, so good on this map. So I want to see if that can continue. I mean, generally, we don't really look at Omen as one of the star players of this team. So he can frag. Some people have actually even questioned his position on the team, whether or not he should be replaced, actually. I've seen some uh, discussion of that on social media. But clearly showing why he's in the team in their last series. I... I, I agree. I, I feel like Almond, you know, he has those games, right? He has those 30 bomb games. They know how impactful he could be, but I still feel like for, for Vici to kind of just get to the next level, just, you know, kind of lay claim of being uh, the undefeated kings of Asian CS, I feel like he needs to, you know, maybe a flying. It, it doesn't have to be necessarily Almond. I feel like even Zoking uh, being, uh, I think flying's an upgrade even for someone like Zoking, but these are, these are just uh, hypotheses. I think that's the right word, Dinko. And uh, Force Bite going to be coming in here for Vici. Almond saving the Kevlar, meaning he's going to buy himself uh, a FAMAS. The rest of them pistols. And Kazi on the scout. How many rounds have we seen him just dismantle uh, his opposition from this particular position <laughs> on, uh, on Mirage, Dinko? It is pretty ridiculous. And alone, he throws his smoke down. Four players coming from Alpha Palace and Connector. Absolutely no way should be surviving. He just pops off and kills everyone. So, very exciting to watch. Tyke getting boosted up. I love that. That's a nice little mm. peek. Let's see what's going on in Connector. No one there. Divine Vendetta are certainly prepared a Mirage. I mean, I think we've seen that pretty clearly yesterday. The game plan was always get in their face and take the fight straight away to D13, but immediately we're seeing a much more slow, methodical approach from Divine Vendetta into this round. They don't want to be losing to the Force Fight. Yeah, for me, personally, 2-1 to 2-0, uh, I still feel it's going to be a pretty solid game of CS. Uh, we all know what Vici can do, and Divine Vendetta, day by day, they've impressed us. They've, they've defeated all the three Mongolian teams in the tournament, by the way, uh, as you pointed out yesterday. It was D13, Mars, Lai, and Tiger, all three falling to the Middle Eastern side. Can they add Vici to the tally? That, that would be massive if they were able to pull that off. If Zoking gets caught out. Edram barely taking any damage, and that's going to force uh, Almond to go for a play. He's going to find Edram, who's on the look. Now the scout comes into play! And Kaze gets attacked, doesn't get the kill. I thought that would maybe have been a collateral. It's going to be falling on back. Tyke, uh, two players waiting to a CD spawn. Almond gets spotted out. The Deagle from the hands of Admin does quite a bit of damage, but doesn't get much done apart from the one kill. 3v3. Now look at the health on Pokemon and Dabdab. Jam Young peeking around the corner. He knows where the bomb's planted. Doesn't spot a player out. And Almond sneaking in all the way from behind. He's down to 7 HP, Dinko, but this flank could be massive. Or maybe not. Pokemon's there. Well, this has to be uh, very quick from Vici if there was any chance to win this round. It's going to be very difficult. Flash buying up. Jam Young taken down by Davdolf. That does leave Almond and Kaze into a pretty unwinnable position. So, mm. it's going to be two rounds of the board for Divine Vendetta. I like the I like the proactive uh, proactivity in some of these postmans. Both might actually get this kill here. Oh, it's all about timing. <gasps> Ooh, 
that could be a free AK-47, but uh, Omen will survive. So discounted for mass, the, the two rifles taken into round number two will be carried on. And for the rest of the uh, the, the T's, uh, sorry, the rest of the CT's, uh, the Deagle, which Omen had, getting uh, dropped over towards uh, Jam Young. And a 5.7 upgrade for Zoking. So still a little bit of a danger here with Divine Vendetta. I, I like the uh, I like how you know they're re-aggressing. They're using the utility well. I know it sounds very basic, Dinko. Like so for maybe someone for EU or NA viewers watching, like they're like, yeah, that's that's normal. What's what's so special about that? But we have been scarred in the past couple of weeks. It's how some of the teams they've they've had the advantage and they kind of just throw it away. And Kaze, there we go. Scout to open it up. Edge jump's gonna fall. And Kaze is looking for more. It's the first step for him in this round. Also have the, has the info that they could be up towards short, but Almond, he's in a good position to look between window and short. So, good spot at the moment in terms of information. Oh, Havoc. Oh, that's horrible. He turns around and still finds the kill. How Zoking not got that kill that shot after shot. Boy, in Havoc's way. 13 HP survives. That was horrible. <laughs> That should have been a free kill. And timing everything working out for him in his favor. Is okay. And now, four players marching up. Havoc very low indeed. Oh, Almond, he goes the wrong way. He's thinking they've fallen back towards B once they uh, spotted out Almond. Because are they going to be going for the stack towards B? Looks like it. And that's just unfortunate. Timing smoke's going to be deployed and immediately Kaze is going to be heading back towards A. Spots a player out. Goes for the fast shot. Doesn't quite get the first tag, but the second follow-up will work. He's done a bit of damage, Dinko. Look at how low they are. Have a Pokemon Tyke. All very low. Jam Young's picked up an AK-47. Trying to spot someone out on top of the smoke. Armin finds one. Won't be expecting the second player there. <laughs> nice little setup from the T's. And this should be the round. Jam Young maybe just wants to hold on to his AK-47. There's nothing much he can do. He can maybe take away a couple of guns, but honestly, is it really worth it? You want to have the AK, you're going to definitely get an extra bit of utility, which you can afford. And with that, Divine Vendetta off to a great start. 3-0 on their map pick. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is the kind of start they need, I feel, coming up against Vici. You let Vici get into the groove of things. They're just going to be picking round after round up. But Divine Vendetta aren't a team that ever feel out of the games, right? Because yesterday we seen D13 get off to a really solid start up against them. I think they maybe won six rounds in a row. It was at least five in a row picked up on the CT side of Mirage. Divine Vendetta fought back and, and won that map very convincingly. So we know they're a very, very solid force on this map. Definitely can take the fight to Vici. Kaze with the utility is going to deploy that out towards middle. I like how wary they are about the aggression and Zoking. Oh, sticking around. I'm not. I'm not comfortable with this. Don't go. Mm. Okay, he turns around in the nick of time. Yeah, Tank is. Very... Tank has mm. been coming out of this underpass very slowly. You have to wait until all the pieces are in play for them. And luckily, Zoking's not in the open when he goes around the corner. I like this from Divine Vendetta. Yeah, they take the time, but very slow, methodical take of top mid. And for VG, they have aggressed to a slower ramp. I like that. You lose mid, you don't have control of B apps, at least you're going to be pushing down the uh, the A ramp area and gathering some information. I still worry about that palace position though. Now they're going to leave Zoking. Admin's going to just be spotting towards palace, but this B hit is looking very likely. You can see the bomb rotating on the uh, on the back of Mr. Havoc towards B apps, and it's going to come down to Jam Young and Almond. Very capable. We've seen Almond on this B bombs, and he was an absolute rock, Dinko, with an M4A1 of his. Let's see if he can continue that particular form. Well, pushing out and towards the B bomb site, Havoc. With the first kill on the Galil, Omen going to be holding on, gets one on the A1S and flicks back. And while he's run out of ammo as well, as alongside that long-winded spray into the chest of Pokemon, not taking him down. Divine Vendetta will be very happy about trading efficiently and getting onto this bomb site. Was very scrappy in towards B, but they've got the bomb planted. And now Davtov looks up to the apartment. Silking just to the left side here. Davtov can't see him. His teammate falls. And now Davtov is just all on the patient play. 
Zoking not going over the top. Oh, his head spotted. Havoc with a headshot as well. And suddenly, a two versus three favoring the T side still in play. And that's enough to support Vici away from this. They didn't get the kills. They can't go for this. They can't sacrifice the AWP of Kaze. And I guess save that on over. It's the next round. It's 4 0 here for Divine Vendetta. Looking very, very good right now. I think it's like two rounds now, Dinka, where we've had Divine Vendetta, the player is taking so much damage and yet. Yet able to somewhat clinch out the rounds. VG Gaming, that B hole just falling flat. I, I love what Divine Vendetta did. The way they just perfectly timed the push as well. Jam Young needed to get, get at least one kill there, but no utility to back him up. And Zoking gets to one kill, but great job from, uh, I think that was uh, Davdov, just keeping him at bay, doing a bit of damage. Oh, I mean, taking a look at what uh, got now over for Vici, it's actually a pretty decent buy coming in overall, and, well, it's us hey. I never realized the buses were here on Mirage, but this is awesome. Yeah, I, I never knew that. I mean, this is pretty cool, like, you know, it's like a, it's like a production bus uh, <laughs> sitting out here in the middle. I like it. I like it. A little bit of screwdriver as well over there, just to yeah, throw it, yank it, like, just... Throw it at Mitch if I Feels need like to. Feels so, like, yeah, definitely Mitch. That's what we want to use. A screwdriver. Oh, this is so cool, though. It's got a this banner is pretty and everything. Cool. Yeah. Feels like VR or something. It feels like I'm in Counter Strike, but I can see myself on a TV. That's weird. We, we are oh. in Counter Strike right now. We are indeed. <laughs> and now we're back to the game. It's going to be 4 0 up to find Vendetta. Just AK 47s across the board. Kaze. And it'll be towards the back of the bomb site. Now, this secondary op that Jam Young has. Actually frees Kaze up a little bit. He can play more confident. He knows he can take these fights and Pokemon. He's gonna take that advent. Now Kaze's under pressure. Zoe King stepping up and getting a double what? 4k. That's huge from Zoe King. Just came out of nowhere. And now Havik, the last remaining player, has to find three kills. He's a clutch player. He can certainly win this. Now he's done in the orbit through the smoke, connecting as well on the Kaze. He hasn't found anything just yet, and that just costs him. Too many players still alive. So many different positions for Havik to deal with. In a world where he spams down through the connector and gets that kill, maybe he finishes off the players in CT. Yeah, he could definitely have pulled that off, but so King, this is it. This is a huge play. Diving through the back of the smoke. <laughs> catches off four players and delivers the first round for Vichy Gaming. Big round for Mr. Zo King. Um I don't think he even expected to get the final kill, but uh, yeah, two of the players in Divine Veneta were very low, even though they got the first kill. And again, like the, the Vichy win the round, but from what? From a very massive, massive spray from Zoking, right? Like, they I, they haven't looked convincing yet so far. And if you ask me, BG just looked like the better team here. Jam Young, one shot, second shot, falls on back. Molotov tossed in, smoke deployed as well. And Jam Young, he's just shutting it down. He's doing his best Kaze cosplay. Here's a player dropping him down as well. He knows where Edge Ram is. Edge Ram will, however, find the kill. But Zoking coming in, spots Edge Ram's position. They know where the second player is as well. And it's all an Edge Ram in a 1v4. They do nothing. It's taken down. Huge round coming out from Jam Young, and the AWP will be retrieved as well. Getting the AWP back is certainly a, a good thing, because obviously this is a huge investment to get the double AWP set up out. And especially because it's so early into the CT half, you never really want to let that economy slide. So they do get the round win. The investment pays off. And now they're seeing the mass returns. Over here for Divine Vendetta, it's just upgraded pistols, a little bit of Kevlar behind it, saving most of their cash into the next round. So Vici should be looking at a third. You'll see 4-3 on the scoreboard. Unless Divine Vendetta pull anything incredible off as they head in towards the safe bomb site with an execute. Yeah, just standard smokes getting deployed, but they haven't cleared us out. They haven't cleared us out, and oh, oh, oh yeah. He prevents one from getting planted, and he will finally be taken down there. A uh, little, little rough. Gonna get the bomb down. This is gonna be a big win for Divine Vendetta. They have the UMP in the hands of Davdov. Pokemon Tyke bleeding internally. Should be an easy retake here for VG. Unless something goes really, really wrong. Jamyang, Almond, Zoke, and the all strike in tandem. Pokemon still being a little bit of a problem, but three players coming in. Another kill for Pokemon. That's made it very expensive, Dinko. That's a, such a massive round for DV. They get the bomb down. They get three kills. Take away three rifles. Sure, the two offs of the retreat, but that's keeping the money, keeping the economy a little honest for Vici. You don't want Vici to get to like 10k on every one of these players. So a pretty big round for the Middle Eastern side. Yeah, it's a huge round. And uh, 
Oh, we'll see four, three, Vici. Again, we were talking about the investment a little bit earlier on, Blair. And uh, you just touched on the point, the fact that now oh, it could be potentially on the ropes. Let's see if Vici can recover going into this next round. If they win against this buy of Divine Vendetta, they're going to be into a grip position on the CT side. That's where they can probably take the lead. So a lot rides on this round for Divine Vendetta. Taiki just charging out on his own. So mm. king. He's going to be looking over the top of the Molotov. Perhaps Taiki's just been a little bit complacent there. Taking liberties, not expecting the player to be going aggressive over the top of the Molly. And, well, doesn't work out for it. Man, deficit immediately here for Divine Vendetta. And they have used up so much utility as well. Now they're really looking at one smoke, three flashbangs, and two Molotovs is all they've got left, Blair. And the round's virtually just begun. Yeah, I, I feel like Tyke might have been listening to the to the uh, to the stream and be like, "Oh, okay, they want me to do something special. I'm gonna go for the kills." And that's that's not it, Tyke. Uh, he's had a he's had a pretty rough rough map so far. I know it's still early. We all know what this guy can do. You know, he can go super sane. But he's died every round so far. Two to two kills, eight deaths. That's not ideal. As Divine Vendetta, they slow things down a bit, but it looks like they will still be heading towards the B-bombs. The Pokemon's gonna try and sell something. He's gonna try and sell a ruse here. Oh, he doesn't check. He doesn't check. But Edge, I'm getting a kill on the Kaze. That is big. And that's gonna leave this A-bomb side looking a little weak. Zoking, though, he finds another one. He's being an absolute beast, but Edge Ram finally shuts him down. It's Davdov and Edge Ram, but Advent still on the bomb side. Spots on Edge Ram, gets the kill, and it's all on Davdov. 1v2 now. Bomb spotted out. 24 seconds to work with. He's gotta get it down. He's gotta. Face off against Almond has got to find Jam Young. I think I might just get the bomb down here. Scoped in, but Jam Young reads it to perfection. And Vici, they tie, they tie things up. Won't save the second off, though, but I think Kaze can buy for himself. Well, this is that replay. I, I can't see him from his perspective. Obviously, you've got high shade or so on, on the broadcast, so we can't exactly see if that's the save for Zou King, but it's definitely difficult nonetheless. You can see he isn't exactly sure of the position. He just kind of traces it slowly over the top of the flames. And while it does work out for him, he gets the spray down. We can't see it from this perspective, but obviously Molotov differ on the settings. So that's why if you're new to Counter-Strike, you should probably go look at some settings guides. Generally, you want to drop those all to low. Yeah, it, it doesn't work for me. I, I, I try keeping it a low, Denko, but I still can't see crap. Well, maybe, my well, maybe some bad. laser eye surgery would be the setting you need. Yeah, probably. I'm supposed to be wearing uh, wearing my glasses, but I just don't because I'm an idiot. And I I, miss, I don't need glasses, luckily, but I'm assuming like contact lenses are a very irritating um, option as well. Like you, I would just hate having to put those in. I, I Listen, I forget to even have food at times. <laughs> or, or, or or go to bed on time. So I don't trust myself to to work with contacts, to be very honest. Yeah, I kind of do that as well. I just kind of forget, oh, I have to eat today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, 9 p.m. Haven't eaten anything. Well, not anything. I generally don't go an hour without eating something, but nothing properly. Well, find Vendetta. Pistols. Did do quite a bit of damage earlier with their... Uh... With the pistols they had. This time it's a little bit of a different approach. They went for the full-on A execute. I'll tell you that, I, I like what DV did in the first few rounds. Even the rounds have lost, right? It, it has come down to like some of the 1v2s, 2v2s. They, they work very well in tandem. The spacing's pretty good. Yes, there was a moment where Ty just ran on out towards A ramp, but apart from that, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying this T side. They're really setting up a challenge. Pokemon finds Almond. I don't even know where he gets the kill, but Zou King is there. Switches off the USP, looking for more edge ramp. Gets dinged down to 3 HP, but he will get the kill. And Kaze, admins there to cover his position from Palace. And edge ramp, he's trapped. And of course, Kaze's not going to miss those. He's, he's had a very quiet start so far, and he's looking for those kills. Rack up a few kills here and there, but daft off. 1v3. Tech 9, flashbang, Kevlar. But Jam Young says no. So Divine Vendetta, I mean, coming into this look pretty prepared. I think they do do quite a bit of preparation from what we've seen. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they come into this knowing the way Vici play Mirage, because we immediately can notice the tendencies in the same system. And that, that's what you have when you're a structured team. People can actually look at what you do and know there's going to be some sort of, sort of consistency. The reason it's uh, it works so well is because it's difficult to counter. 
But when you take a look at Kaze, do you think there's, he always kind of plays that ticket box area? He doesn't really move a whole lot on this yeah. map. You know, you won't be seeing him middle a lot of the time. You won't be seeing him aggressive, aggressive in towards connectors. So do you feel like potentially we've got Divine Vendetta having a look at uh, how Kaze plays and trying to avoid him because he hasn't really got involved a whole lot yet? I, I agree with you. I, I think that's why some of the, uh, you know, the ATEX, for example, have been the classic ATEX, right? And, and they always are able to find the player playing inside of the smokes. Uh, it could be a hard counter. And for VG, it's also, it's also almost like, you, you look at Mirage, it's, it's a map that they're very, very good on. Even with the system, even though they've been playing the same system pretty much for every game they've had, the only team they face trouble against is, of course, uh, good old Tai Lu, right? And I, I don't think they're going to be really going for any changes here. Kaze, though, you're talking about how he's being, you know, kind of nullified Dinka, but it's not really working out here. Abbott, Flames pushing him out from his position. Kaze. Well, there we go. 3k for the man. Survives in 2 HP. Advent the only casualty. But I think you're onto something there, Nico. I feel like uh, Vici really haven't changed much up when it comes to their setup. You know, you have Almond at B. You have Zoking just floating around with the A bomb side. You have Advent kind of playing some of the harder roles, the very sacrificial roles. And uh, they haven't... Re That's the thing. They, they Even despite not switching much up, they still find so much success. So why do you have to, right? Whatever, whatever little crazy switch up you have, you might as well save it for the playoffs uh, against Tyloo. It's a classic save the strats for the important game. Ooh, I like this. How's he switched it up, Dinko? They've heard us. Oh, they have. And he's got towards Catwalk, and now Taiki takes down Ullman. Tyke's already moving forward with Zoe King, not even aware of the quick piss being taken, but luckily, Tyke can't get much more than the one kill done. Ezra wants to try and get the poor, oh, the rifle picked off of his teammate, and while Jam Young takes him down the orb. How, how does Tyke not barely scratch Zoe King with the M4A1? I mean, we didn't see his POV, but Zoe King was looking completely the wrong way, Dinko. That was very strange. I'm confused. Yeah, I think maybe he got kind of misplaced the crosshair, then kind of panicked, and Zoe King moved behind the cover. And then Advent peeks out and takes him down, I think it was. So, or Almon. That's a little unfortunate. Yeah, that could have been way more expensive, I felt like. But Jam Young, man. This guy can do everything. He can secondary off. He can hold bomb sets on his own. He can rifle like an absolute beast. And even outshining Kaze at times. But yeah, Kaze switching it up right now. As a fast hit comes in towards A, but Advent, mm, not expecting Pokemon to be pushing that deep. And Kaze now, the smoke, obscuring his vision. Actually, rather the flashbangs are just forcing him back. The 4v4, Tyke's taking a bit of damage. Bomb is going to get planted. A very fast play from, from uh, Divine Vendetta this time around towards A. Flank coming in from Zoking. This is pretty early. They might not be expecting this, Dinko. So King, coming out of Palace, Pokemon, just holding on around the corner, Omen's going to be there in the lineup, Pokemon looking for Jam Young as well, but Zou King drops on in, he'll get one kill, but Dapdor tries to turn, just too many players now into a one versus one, Havoc has taken down the first, and the time's taking too far gone now to win this round, Havoc has pulled it off, he spins around the corner, shuts down Kaze, and that's it. It's going to be around for Divine Vendetta, Havoc just playing so passively back up in the Tetris position. And we do see him do a lot of work from that post-plant position. A lot of players will struggle from that angle because it feels very... Un there's no cover, really. You're kind of stuck in the open quite a bit there. But Havoc mm -hmm. seems to consistently take one or two players down from that spot. So, yeah, Divine Fantetta are quite good in these post-plants. Yeah, especially having someone like Havoc. He, he's just been playing for so very long in the scene that he just uh, has an experience, an innate ability to kind of clutch these impossible situations like you said second time we've seen him win a clutch from that from the tetris position i think yesterday was a 1v3 against mazalai neat shots coming out from him but yeah divine vendetta they mix it up a little bit they go for the fast play towards uh towards a and unfortunately for vici the uh, the the one round or rather the the, uh, the second round kazi doesn't play to his ticket booth and unfortunately he gets smoked off from his position advent does a great job getting just one kill but then immediately traded and uh Despite an early frank from Zoking, again, have a coming out on top. But despite winning the round, Dinko, look at the money for uh, Divine Vendetta. That's rough. 
Mm. That's very rough. Like, look at that. Like, who won the previous round? <laughs> you can ask the yeah. question right now. And, and I'll, but I really respect the decision not to fu uh, fully invest. I think that's a. I think that's a decision that shows that Divine Vendetta have a great mind behind this team. It's not just crazy individuals trying to pop off. They, they're thinking about the Counter Strike they're playing, and I like it. I, I respect it massively. They realize, okay, even if we full buy here, it's still probably not going to be enough. We're probably going to go back to another low buy scenario. So let, let's go with a couple of MAC-10s. Let's go with a Galil, hit into this B-bomb site, try and put pressure on this double op setup with our quick pace, and we'll see if it works out for them. Tight is going to be picked off early from Jam Young. The smoke's up, so that's going to allow the cross in. Good execute on this B-bomb site. Almond's under pressure. Jam Young gets rid of Pokemon. Now the Molotov comes in as well. At this moment in time, well, it's still looking good for Vici, but a bomb plant, that's going to secure extra cash. Oh, yeah, and I, I, I completely agree with you. For a moment, I was a little confused, and I realized, yeah, they, they have two rounds remaining. They want to ensure they have money for the final round as well. Edge Ram picking up the AWP is going to come in massive. Not really known for his opping prowess. They can make something happen. You're all three players trapped on the side that didn't go. So they, these crossfires, it needs to click. Zoking waking patiently. Bomb still taking away 15 seconds remaining. They need to make this happen. The Zoking just oh. finds one kill. Dabbed off with the spray with the Galil. He might have just done this. 10 seconds, 7 seconds remaining. And they're going to have to probably go for the save. Kaze, he's just going to nope the hell out of there. Edge ramp up close. And he's going to win this one for his team. Six rounds of Divine Vendetta. What an absolutely genius call that was. I didn't... I had my doubts. I really had my doubts, but my word, Divine Vendetta. They're not just, they're playing chess right now, Dinko. They're just playing for the next round. They're playing for like two, three rounds down the line. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I like this in Divine Vendetta. That strategy, that was one, it was a slightly different variation, but it's a strategy that was used uh, or popularized by Astralis a long time ago, where you send that one player quickly out of the apartments, and his job is to try and dive through the window before the smokes actually pop. And the issue there is Jam Young's position perfectly counters the initial kill. So I'm thinking as soon as they lose that one player, it's starting to look a little rough. Maybe they can get a bomb plant, but it's a fantastic call knowing they're going up against a double op setup, saving the money over for this next round. That's exactly what we want to see. That's perfect counter strike coming in from Divine Vendetta. Now the Molotov goes on up, Jam Young trying to reposition back inside the side. Now he has a chance on a Davtor, but he whiffs his spray. Davtov gets rid of him, Edge Ram as well. And so King Armin and Kaze trying to pull off a three versus four. Bomb plant's not yet through though, Blair, and that's a bit of an issue. So King taking apart though. Now it's Almond and Kaze. We're looking at a safe call. Yep, Kaze left alone now. And Edgeram knows. Edgeram knows. But uh, Kaze will still get the kill now. Is he really gonna try? No way. Okay, Kaze. Let's see if he can win this. Oh, no. <laughs> Definitely uh, can see Kaze winning one of those rounds. That's the, that's a crazy part, but it doesn't work out for him. Now it's an eco, basically. <laughs> There's no money available, but it's the last round and a half. They have to invest. I would have rather seen the safe call there, Bly, I'll be honest. I... I just want to point out, it's a very small little thing there, but the final kill which Davdov got onto, onto Kaze, the timing of his peak. You might be wondering, oh, he just went for the dry peak. No, he knew his teammate was going, was running and just barreling it from the houses. And, and Kaze, he, his cross is trained in the apps region to just, you know, take down the C4 carrier. And the moment the C4 is about to cross on over, that's when Admin just strikes. Sorry, that's when uh, Davdov just peeks around the corner and, and Kaze, as good as he, as he is, the flick not fast enough. That was so well played. The past couple of rounds have been just genius from uh, Divine Vendetta. Taking advantage of the, the, the money situation. Taking advantage of the, the way the positions are being played by Vici. And now Advent left alone. And he stays alive for a very long time, Dinko. But in the end, the 1v5 is not going to be enough. 8-7. to seven. What a showing from Divine Vendetta. And if you look at the... If you look at the, you know, the players popping up, Zoking on 15, Jam Young, Almond and 12 apiece, you're like, wow, they've done, their, they've done enough. And they almost seem like they did. They went seven in a row. But apart from that, they got sandwiched between the three and the five rounds, or rather it was the four and the five rounds that uh, Divine Vendetta were able to get. So very, very impressive performance coming out from the Middle Eastern side. And now, if they can replicate this on the CT side, yeah, map number three looking very likely. And I say that because I still don't see them winning Inferno. Yeah, um, I can definitely get behind that. I, I was uh, kind of always expecting a, a good fight here on Mirage. And so far, so good from Divine Vendetta. Eight rounds posted. 
Going into the CT half, Havoc has a diffuse kit and a flash bind with the rest on Kevlar. And over here for Vici, well, it's four sets of Kevlar, smoking a flash bind for Advent. After all, peeking down in towards middle. Two players coming through the underpass, two from top mid, and now they run into the connector. Mm. 5v5. Don't see that that often. Advent and Armin. I like what Davdav did there. He immediately peeled away. The second unit with two Ts are waiting for him. He doesn't take the fight. But four CDs charging off CD spawn. This is going to get very ugly real quick, Denko. Well, the charge on in. Jam Young and Kase finding the kills. Tight can have it. Fighting back on him. And now it's Almond, Advent, and Jam Young just holding on the post plant position from the connector. I'm looking for the headshot, but it's a cleanup what? from Divine Vendetta. The kills all come in. Davtop just annihilates Almond inside of the connector. Divine Vendetta, that's a brilliant retake. And the ninth round picked up going into the second half. Havoc even getting that headshot while being aim punched, I think. That is so impressive from Divine Vendetta. They win both the pistols, Dinko. They just might have done enough. And of course, uh, Bai gonna be coming in from Vici to get the bomb down. Free Galil, AK. Almond with the Deke. I'd rather Advan give the Galil to Almond. But it's, it's a classic simple conundrum, isn't it? Do you give your best player the Deagle because he can actually make it work, or do you give him a rifle? I don't think we ever really got a clear-cut answer on that uh, particular debate from all our big brain talent in the industry. What would you do, Dinko? Imagine that simple in a team. Would you give him the AK? Would you give him the Deagle? The AK. Fair play. I mean, you can definitely see the, the logic behind both. I mean, I'm sure there's arguments for, okay, well, he's going to be able to do something with the Deagle, while the rest won't. And I can understand that, but still, can you do more with the AK? I think so. So, you can definitely see the argument for both sides. Pokemon, he's uh, taken down. Elman and Advent finding the kills. Now Havoc, Tyke, and Davdov. A three versus four. And, well, make it 3v3 because Havoc's just spotted Almond making his way up through short. Bit of a gap for Advent to play with. I don't think we'll be seeing a CT go through there because Davdov's already in towards jungle. And he will catch out Advent from the window room. Now Kaze alongside Jam Young, the last two remaining players, and Kaze's gonna attack the bomb. He's the only player with health, and he's gonna find the immediate headshot. Tyke just torn apart. Oh, <gasps> what? Somehow Jam Young picking up the headshot and not going down. He's 12 HP, not a single bullet landing, and it's on the Havoc yet again to try and pull off a clutch. A one versus two in total. He's taken down Kaze. Now the last remaining player with 12 HP. Jam Young. Jingles with the timing. There it is. Havoc with the kill. The clutch goes his way. And Havoc, he is incredible at these clutches. Yeah, he's a clutch meister. I I don't understand how the round just went so back and forth there. Jam Young winning a duel he had no business winning. A 4v3 to a 3v3 to a 2v3. And then finally Havoc clutching out a 1v2. So, pretty much like a super fast pace game of tennis. Almond did a very good job just kind of playing distraction towards short. I, I feel like he... Didn't necessarily have to walk into B there. Uh, you, when you have the man advantage, if it was like a, maybe 3v4 or something, yeah, he could have probably gone for that that information play. But at that point in time, him just staying alive towards the the window room area, I think that's that's enough. The, the uh, sorry, the uh, the ladder room area, I think that would have been enough. You know, he's going to be gathering information. The fact that he's alive in that vicinity is going to definitely be there in the back of the minds of the CTs as well. So. I feel like a little bit of overextension coming out from Almond in that particular instance. However, for Divine Vendetta, they survived the scare, Dinko. Uh, and Vici, they're gonna, they're gonna force it up again. This is a weird buy. Advent. Okay. Advent sacrificed all his money for his team. He's going full hunting. I can appreciate that. The selfless play. Well, Jam Young down into middle. Let's take a look at the leaderboards before we went into this match, and a lot of them, a lot of the top spots are being taken by the likes of Kaze, Almon, and Jam Young. All in the server. On Pokemon. That's not good. Jam Young catches him, but Davdov able to reply. 
Now oh, three versus four. A man advantage in play. On the T side now. And they go for the bomb plant. It's going to be dabbed off with the kill. Alman going down. The spray coming through. A man advantage no longer there for either side. Back into the equilibrium. Good position taken by Zoking in towards jungle. And now Divine Vendetta, they look to run down in towards the site again from CT. Utility deployed, Molotovs, flashbangs all into the air. And now Kaze, around the corner. It's going to be under pressure as the MP9s run towards his position. He's going to go down, but two players still alive in jungle. Does Tyke check it? He does, but he can't find the kill. Now one versus two, defused to the smoke. And Davdov, he'll take down Advent as he swings into the open. It's Divine Vendetta with yet another successful retake. They make it look clean, they make it look so good, and yeah, I agree with you, like, every time Divine Vendetta, they go for the map pick, you know, we sometimes be a little bit surprised, we're like, mm, do you want to pick that map against a team? Wait, you haven't even played this map at all in the past couple of months, but they seem to have a game plan, Dinko, and it's not just on one side, they're looking very, very, very good right now, and even go for attack timeout, using it very effectively, looking very solid indeed, and Ricci Gaming, what did it do at this point? It has been a very, very quiet game for Kaze. Uh, and I say that, but I mean, he's still, like, you know, he's got, like, nine kills a piece. And look at that. That's actually insane. Vici have an average of 23 HP left at round end. And Divine on 15, yet Divine are leading 11 to 7. What does that tell you? Dov and Kaze head to head. I think they're two very interesting opposers to see go up against each other. Just looking at a statistic as well a little bit earlier on for Kaze, and he's actually leading the way in terms of deaths per round. So, he likes to get involved a lot. I think we've seen him. He likes to go for the clutch. He's not so much of a jib. <laughs> Even though, probably would have been better saving a couple of rounds ago. You want that from an orb. You want him to get involved. You want to be him to be confident in taking fights because, okay, the majority of those crazy clutch, uh, clutch scenarios he's not going to win, but every now and then he pulls them off. It's all you need, Dinko. Sometimes that is indeed all you need. Well, Orman replying back, finding Edgeram, dropping into the side, Havoc at the back of the site. They know his position. Kaze spots out Tyke and Kaze sprays him down. 2v3 now. Davdov and Pokemon. I think this should be the call for the save. Yeah, they're not really moving from CD spawn right now. And Avicii, they finally uh, stemmed the bleeding a bit. What was it? 7 to 4? And then Divine Vendetta just basically winning uh, 6 rounds in a row. 7 rounds in a row, I believe. And, uh, well, Avicii, they finally st strike back. A little bit of a hit towards uh, his bomb side. It's kind of crazy if you look at it, Denko. Like, uh, Divine Vendetta, they win the pistol round. And off of that, Vici seems like they've had the better buy almost every single round. Yeah, it's, sure, they it's, get the bomb down, but still. Another thing is, though, that, that kind of continued over on the uh, T side as well. Which is strange to say, because usually we'd say in these scenarios that because whoever's on the T-Side economy should generally have the better buy for the most part, but even Dolphin Vendetta actually suffered a little bit on that front over in the first half. It's been a rough time for Divine Vendetta in terms of the economy, but they are still winning rounds. They're in the lead, 11-8 right now. Dabdov actually dominating the battle against Kaze at the moment. And with that for Divine Vendetta, despite having uh, survived the, uh, the first few rounds here, despite having won them pretty well, they will have to make do with the two saved weapons and the and Deagles and the 5-7. One thing I will hand to Vici is that they, their, their anti-ecos are usually pretty solid. I think that a one team in Asia who have uh, the best success, at least in domestic competition when it comes to you know winning their anti-ecos, Edge ramp. 
What if an aggressive angle from the man? Just looking to spot out some information. Pokemon with AK to cover his captain's back. Zoking gets spotted out. Immediately, Edge, I'm just going to toss in the smoke. It delays him a bit more further. Zoking's still going to be walking up, though. He's got Kazi with the bomb. Bomb hasn't been spotted out yet. Just waiting, holding the smoke. Second smoke being utilized. The two CTs. They're... They're trying to put up an impression there might be more players than just the two of them, but it, Kaze and Zoking. What are they going to do here? We have a player pushing up apps as well. Jam Young sneaking slowly up. Edgeram falls. It's going to be all in Pokemon. Oh, no clears. Timing doesn't work out. And that's a round right there. That's so unfortunate. His timing. He could have found one, maybe even two kills there, especially with a backup of Pokemon. That could have went so well for Divine Vendetta. That is definitely unfortunate. Now they have to save the AWP into the next round. They still got Kevlar and Havoc and Tyke as well. Liberty Utility. But Pichu will not be complaining about that round. Only losing the one player themselves. Only having to take down two. So, pretty impressive stuff. And clean it up easily. And we move into this next round. And still not going to be looking good for Divine Vendetta across the board. So we should be looking at realistically 11-10. Before we see a full buy come in again from Divine Vendetta. Yeah, th this should be the round where they... And, and they have been very, very smart with their money. At least from what we've seen so far is in the first half. So yeah, I don't see a buy coming out here again. It's going to be uh, upgraded pistols though. They can afford that. Up and the dab dog can still be a problem. But Vici Gaming, slowly but surely, Dinko, they are clawing their way back into this map. Looking at the scoreline in the, in the first half, and then of course uh, Divine Vendetta winning the, the first three rounds of the second half. It looked like it was pretty much almost going to be uh, over, but Vici, fast play coming in towards A. They're not wasting any time. There's no one on the A bomb side. Pokemon is going to have to go for contact plays. Joking, waiting patiently for the smokes to. Uh, Get deployed. Pokemon is going to try time it right. And the timing is brilliant. It's going to find Jam Young. Barely takes any damage. And the, the CTs, look at the presence. They're just going to be pushing in. They're just going to try and suit chaos as Pokemon getting hungry to pick up the AK 47. But Zoking's going to drop him. Edge Arm replies back. Zoking knows Edge Arm's position. Dabbed off at the up. Zoking. From above, he's going to fall. And all of a sudden, it's all an almond. Bomb dropped in no man's land. That has got completely. Utterly obliterated, and we were talking about how Vichy's and Aikos are so solid, Dinko, but that fell apart real quick. Well, the Vi Vendetta will not be complaining about this kind of round. Vichy, don't really know how it's happened. I'm gonna be uh, a little bit red faced now at this point. Almond trying to do his best to recover this round, but it's hard to see a world in which he does. Off the corners, he spots Ezram, but now they've got info of where Almond's playing from, and he still didn't take down Ezram. Flash down from CT. He knows his player down in towards there, but he's still got to deal with so many difficult angles, and I think Divine Vendetta are playing this one perfectly. Almond trying to take away the weapons, though. You know, I mean, he's got money to buy anyway. Still saved as he wants to, but I'd rather he just try and maybe ensure that DV lose a gun. But this crossfire is just perfect. There's nothing he can do. I, I gotta give Devon Vendetta credit for that. It wasn't about VG necessarily playing it, but of course they could have played it much better. But just the the sheer aggression from Divine Vendetta, they're like, all right, you 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 have the A bomb set. Well, we have nothing to lose. We actually have nothing to lose. We just have a few pistols. We're just gonna just storm on in. The aggression for Pokemon. Zoki replies back with two of their own. But the Dabdov amongst all the chaos with the AWP, he plucks one away. And then, of course, the other two players just with the AK-47 shredding the remaining players of Vichy Gaming. So there you have it. 12 to 9. I think how you were saying it might be 10 to 10 to 11 before we see Divine Vendetta get another round. But they uh, they say no. Well, 12 9, 4 away from victory. Divine Vendetta, if they win this round, are going to be in prime position to do so. At least get closer and closer to that coveted map point. Well, Zoking, look at the position he's got himself in. He's all the way through behind B. He's going through the market. They have no idea. 
Absolutely none. Zol King is going to be taking them down here. Spot staff to almost down to the trigger discipline. Spots out to the left side. No, there's two players. He'll call that to his teammates. Now getting into a better position. The trigger disappoint. The first headshot. The spray on the second. But three players? He's not going to be expecting that. But luckily, it's just Tyke here. And he's going to shut down the bomb carrier. Why? One by one, right into Tyke. And he's going to shut them down. Around that Zou King should have confirmed victory in. He's done enough by taking two players down. But the rest of his teammates can't get rid of Tyke. And he is going to save the day for Divine Vendetta. I, uh, <sighs> There's one player left there. He gets Zoking. The three of you have just jump out together. Why are you one player and the second player just holds an angle expecting Tyke to peek? All right. Kazi, why does he jump on down there? Why does he go towards truck? Right? So we can peek together. Like, he drops on towards truck. Then Armin drops down so they can double peek him. They get the kill. Instead, one by one by one... And Ajaram comes in and finishes off the job. That's abysmal for Vichy. And it almost feels like it almost feels like deja vu, Dinko. It's literally what happened against Mazla, if you remember. No, sorry, well, not, well, not Mazla. Was it Tiger? I, I forget. I think it was against Tiger, but Tiger just single-handedly held onto the B bomb side from pretty much the same position at Pillar's angle. He's very good at what he does. But if you give him that much space to work with, your spacing is completely off. You just speak him one by one. He's gonna win those deals time and time and time again. Abysmal round from Vichy after Zoking pretty much. He gift wrapped it. He gift wrapped that round and gave it to his team, and his teammate just flushed it down the toilet. What a terrible present it is. Everyone's received one of those. <laughs> well, Havoc. That oh, was the HE grid up into the apartments. Now Havoc's gonna be under pressure. Zil King gonna be working again. He did so much in the last round, but he's had enough. He wants to take matters into his own hands and show them how it's done. Another follow up, Tyke. He's played short every time, and they still don't check it. And now Ezram, he's trying to follow up in this position. Can he spot anything out? Kaze currently scoped in towards short as the bomb plant will come through. Missed shot from Kaze. You don't see those often come through, and Ezram's going to capitalize on the opportunity given to him, and they spray away. Another retake for Divine Vendetta. They just keep pulling these off, Blair, every round. 14-9, they're now two away from victory. This might not even be close. I don't know if Vici's going to be able to recover this. I don't think so. I think Divine Vendetta have done this. They might have just broken... Well, they've almost broken the money. But apart from that, I think they've mentally broken Vici as well. It, these are some sloppy around for Vici. Again, uh, I say that. I don't want to, It's not me taking anything away from Divine Vendetta. Like, Edgeron played his perfection. Like, the angle he held. Kaze missed shot. Great spray there as well to finish off Jam Young. Why was no one spotting short early on? Like, why is everyone looking in the same angle? The three of them, all three for a moment, they were looking towards Ab's area. Why aren't you expecting a faster flying coming out from short or maybe even towards Palace? Where are the protocols? Yeah. Uh, this is just not the Vici we know. Um, but fantastic stuff from Divine Vendetta, I have to say. They're looking so solid and they're consistently looking good. Like, the players are always popping off because I'm kind of wondering, is this going to be an overperformance from them in certain scenarios? I was definitely thinking that towards the start of the tournament. But as we've progressed and we've seen this team plays so many matches. This is like their sixth one now. So this is uh, this has been incredible from Divine Vendetta. They have consistently looked good. And now taking the fight to Vici. This just wasn't a match we thought they'd be able to win. But I definitely predicted at least one map. And Mirage is the scenario where I can definitely see Divine Vendetta winning it. I said that before. Now we come into it and they are doing so. I don't know how I feel about the rest of the series still. But if Fiji play like this, there is that opening for Divine Vendetta to potentially walk away with this. Pokemon. He hasn't shown himself yet. Timing is good, but aim not good enough. Kaze gets go, but Havoc, his turn wielding the big green zoom banger and edge ram. Oh no, this is unfortunate. He goes for the aggro play, but the smoke obscures his vision. This time I don't see it happening, though, for uh, Divine Vendetta. Havoc. So very low on 6 HP. Tyke. The only player with health and a utility. And look at the money, Dinko. Like, despite the fact they've brought it to 14, the money is still looking very, very shabby for the Divine Vendetta side. And Armin. Sneak on up. Picks up an AWP for his uh, Armrad. We should finally get to 10 rounds. I still don't feel it's good enough. I feel like Divine Vendetta pretty much sealed the deal here. Unless Jamming can take away these two guns, force him to go for a couple of Ecos. But even then, they've looked so darn good the way they've been playing this. 
and Tyke just runs across, decapitates Jam Young, so the two rifles will be saved. Maybe they could buy around this. I can I can envision them. Like, this is one run where I feel like they could potentially go for it. And just, like, close it out before VG are able to get back into the game. Edge on 42. Dive on 4400. Pokemon 3500 means Ty can probably drop uh, a FAMAS. Or rather, Havoc's gonna drop the FAMAS uh, over to Pokemon. Well, there we go. The buy is gonna be coming in. Lack of utility means, Dinko, the retakes are gonna be quite a problem. So, they're gonna have to rely on these individual duels. Expect to see aggression coming up from the CD side right now. Well, Kaze takes down Davdov towards top middle. Man advantage opened up for Vichu. And they need everything they can get now towards the later stages of regulation. And Kaze getting that opening will certainly put them in a good position. Two players towards top middle from Vichu. One in towards the underpass. Just a default stance across the board from them. Now the utility comes in towards mid. I think Divine Vendetta might suffer a little bit here. And they're going to peek in towards middle. Perfect setup, ready for it. Pokemon only getting one kill. And they'll fight back, but Havoc, Tyke, they find kills between them. And now it's a one versus two. Havoc can win this, but Almond's going to say no. Peeks from the underpass, shuts him down. The bomb is top middle. So that could have been an absolute horrible scenario there for Vici. But they get an 11th round nonetheless. For Divine Vendetta, it's the Eco. I got to give credit where it's due to a Divine Vendetta there. They they lose a first player uh, based off the aggression and they decide, all right, they've lost top, they lost a player with aggro, aggro top mid. Uh, VG are probably gonna pounce and try and take mid control. So they set up all four players there towards short and connector. Unfortunately, the timing was a little bit off. They had the player coming down over there, but for, for a moment, I think of, especially when Havoc's in a 1v2, you start to believe, you start to believe there. But VG, but now, this should be a little bit of a safe round. A little bit. But there is a stack towards A. Almond. Flashbang is good. He's gonna hug the wall. Just spraying blindly. Tyke. Brilliant 2k. That is just massive. They've stolen them away. Another kill comes in. The flames are doing a bit of damage. But Jamion's left alone. And he's gonna be spotted out. They're gonna win with the pistols and a flash. They go. A pistol. Sorry, a flash and pistols. And Vici, they've just been punched. Just been punched in the nether regions. They're not going to recover from that. They're just like How? holding their groin, lying on the ground and crying. <laughs> Blur, you were saying a couple of rounds ago, oh, Vici are really good at these ad decos. Oh, well, they've lost I'm two wrong. now. Yeah, you, they've <laughs> lost two in the last, like, seven rounds. What is going on? Vici not looking like a team that uh, we know they can be. And Divine Vendetta, well, they're looking fantastic. Now we move into pro probably the last round at this point. Vici don't have a whole lot to work with. We've got two AK-47s, a UMP, a Galil, alongside a Tech-9. Not a whole lot of utility. And they're going to go in for this A hit. Three players to the palace. The waterfall strategy being deployed. It's going to be Pokemon tossing the near down in towards the Tetris area. But look at Edgeram trying to be sneaky on the edge of the smoke. But Jam Young, it's going to take him away. Damage has been done to Pokemon as well. So potentially around here for Vici. They've got the bomb planted. Divine Vendetta being really good on these retakes, and that's certainly going to help things out. Tyke with a double kill pulls it into a man advantage for Divine Vendetta. Advent and Kaze, strong crossfire between Tetris and Palace. The bomb tap. Pokemon's low. The spam's going to come through, but he gets off the bomb at the right time. But Kaze and Almond, they find headshots, and that's not done yet, Blair. Pokemon and Tyke having to fight through. Now it's just Tyke left into the one versus three. The first headshot as he taps the bomb, but the time is ticking now. He's got to find the kills quickly, and it's just not going to happen for him in terms of getting it done in time. And Almond will get rid of him. A 12th round for Vici Gaming. They answer back in the next round. But my god, this game is scrappy. Oh, yeah. And here's the thing. It's it's not about, like, we saw a few, you know, we saw a few tweets here and there yesterday about, oh, Divine Vendetta, they have the ping advantage or whatever. And uh, fair enough. You know, it might have a little bit of a ping advantage, even though playing the Middle East to Singapore usually, in my experience, of having watched these Middle Eastern teams play in the past six, six, seven years, they've always had a disadvantage. But maybe some routings improve here and there. But it's not just about you know, winning the aim duels for Divine Vendetta. They're playing better Counter-Strike. It's simple as that. They are playing better Counter-Strike than Vici. Vici making too many mistakes, and they're getting punished for it.
Divine Vendetta, if they win this map, it's not because of any other factor apart from the fact that they are clean and they are playing a much cleaner game of Counter-Strike overall. Their economic decisions have been very good. The way they're approaching these rounds have been phenomenal so far. And uh, this time, they're going to go for... This is this is weird. This is weird. This, I don't understand, Dinko. Like, I kind of expected a full save, maybe a couple of upgraded pistols, but Edge Ram, Pokemon, and Havoc have gone for the full investment. Havoc dropping, I think, the gun over to, I guess, Tyke and Davdov. Davdov and Tyke have kept some money in their bank account. But apart from that, it's a complete full investment. And yes, they have three rounds still more to play with. And look at this. Look at the aggression. Just in your face. No respect. Jamion, good for one. But he will fall. That's man advantage. Well, sorry, no man advantage. But at least a kill going the way to find Vinted on what is a very strange buy indeed. Almond in the smoke. And Edgeham's going to find him. That is unfortunate. Well, the bomb is going to be going back over towards T spawn. They'll leave Kaze with the AK, the only AK on the other end of the map. At this moment in time, Divine Vendetta have actually just rotated the last player away from the A bomb site. Or pretty far away, as Rum's going to be hanging around, but very deep in CT. He hasn't really got any utility either here. Luckily for him, the T side don't have any smokes, any flashes to get rid of the CT position. So Ezram could just take a straight up in fight in towards the bomb site. Well, he might just get the perfect timing, but it doesn't matter. Zokin gets rid of him. And now a three versus three, the bomb planted for Vici. But Taiki sprinting back in. Another impressive performance from this player. There's MP9 looking to try and take down a couple of players. He moves through. Zoking sprints into the open. He's going to be shut down immediately. And now Ty can sandwich. He could win this round for them. A one versus two all on Kaze to try and keep them alive. And that's going to work out for him. Just spraying wildly up and down. And that's a 13th round for Vici Gaming. They're not done yet. Kaze saves the day. I don't even think he realizes how he got the, the, how he got the final kill there. I think he's just wild. flicking back and forth. Luckily, they're so low. So he only needed one or two bullets to connect. But... And you don't really want to, to have these scenarios where you're going up against what Divine Vendetta had and you have to rely on Kaze doing this. <laughs> he wasn't even sure he got the uh, the player who was peeking out from below. Oh. Well, all the rounds, Blair. Round 29. <laughs> Potentially a 30th round coming up. Really? They got Deagles now, Dinko. That's an upgrade over the USPs. <laughs> True. Go for the connector oh, play again. What? How? I you. No way. Well, you, you predicted it. You laid it up and well, you pulled it a hole in one. <laughs> Jam Young left alone. Oh. One versus three. Galea walking forward. This is disgustingly bad from Vici. They're going to spot the bomb. <laughs> They're just going to sit on that. Wait. Wait. Did it... What? Did it... Did... Hello? Did you not see the they didn't see the How? Bomb. They ran over the top of the bomb. No. They ran over it. Oh my god, that is ridiculous. How? How has that happened? Well, you Jam Young, you've been gifted a brilliant opportunity here. Got time, buddy. You don't have to run. Right now, in towards middle edge. Ram, he's going to spot him, but he goes down now. One versus one. Jam Young, oh, there he goes. Dabbed off. Ready for it. He was in behind. And it's 16 rounds on the board. Divine Vendetta. Well, they will take Mirage and Vici.